Okay, so good morning and welcome back. After I stopped rolling cameras at about midnight last night, I thought to myself, uh, I'm gonna carry on just tinkering and putting a few more components together and then got a little bit carried away. So the next thing I knew, it was two o'clock in the morning and I've got quite a lot more done than I realized. So I thought it might be helpful to give you a little rundown of each of the components that I've built so far and bring you back up to speed. So the first thing I started with, which I showed you in the last video or last night, were the gantry side plates. There's two of these, basically a plate with six rollers and a motor, stepper motor mounted through. And then one of them has a limit switch as well. So the, the purpose of this end limit switch is that if the machine manages to kind of reach the edge of its working envelope, that stops the motors from trying to continue past their, their point of travel and damaging themselves. That cuts everything out, so that's great. And then the second component was the X carriage, which is this component right here. So this has eight V wheels and two kind of driving wheels that will be connected onto the stepper motor. So this piece will eventually slide onto the X rail and will slide up and down. The component after that was the Z axis controller, which is this bit here. This is where the router will eventually sit. So I mentioned in my first video that the Z axis is screw driven and not belt driven. So you can see that here. The step motor will wind backwards and forwards and drive the Z axis up and down so the router can cut at different depths. From there we got onto the, the Y axis rails. So these are kind of the outer rails of the machine. So after that we put together the base frame. The base frame is two outer rails with three connecting rails that brings the whole thing together into a frame. Uh, on top of that goes the MDF waste board. So you use the MDF board to get the base frame squared away and tightened off. I've read online that a lot of people will actually then, on top of the MDF waste board that has made everything square, then screw an extra bit of MDF as kind of a sacrificial waste board so that when it comes to re replacing that waste board, you take the top one off without interfering with the bottom one and, and taking the machine out of square, which I think is probably a really great idea. It's definitely something I'm, I'm gonna look at. And then unfortunately from there we hit a bit of a snag. So this is the X-Rail. There is a very minor bit of damage just on the top here, which to look at is probably not even a millimetre. So the problem with this damage is that the carriage slides on here and uses these V-channels to slide up and down. And the carriage slides beautifully along here until it hits the damage and then the resistance as you're pushing it along kind of doubles or maybe almost triples, which I believe using the motors that come with this kit, they won't sense that kind of resistance. So it could cause issues with calibration, the machine maybe not cutting as accurately as it could. The good news, I spoke to Ryan at 3D Tech UK and he's got another one of these rails on the way. So that should be with us in a day or so. So in the meantime, I've had one or two people messaging me asking how they can stay up to date with the progress of this build beyond YouTube, uh, whether there's like a website or any social accounts. So I've set up uh, Facebook and Instagram accounts where you can stay up to date with the progress of the build. Feel free to connect with me on there. So if you have any specific questions about certain parts or certain stages of the build then please do uh, give me a shout on Instagram, Facebook or leave a message in the comments below. We'll be back for the next video when the replacement X-Rail has arrived. In the meantime thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in video three for the rest of the build and getting this machine working. <laughs>